Now, I'm very excited to welcome back a great sports better podcast host and good friend of the show in Mr. Will Hill from the Bear Bats, from VSIN, as well as the Should Have Bet More podcast. You can follow Will on Twitter at not the Will Hill. Will, thanks for coming back, man. Like you just said, it's been a minute. It's like time goes so fast. It doesn't feel like this since March. How you doing? Good. What's going on? Thanks for having me. It's always fun. I, uh, I, yeah, I, top of my head, I was like, yeah, we probably talked a couple weeks ago. A couple, and then you look back and it's like, well, I think it was Selection Sunday last time you were on mine. And uh, yeah, like you said, time goes by fast. And we're sitting here, middle of June. It feels like football's far away. In some ways, it is, but only like six weeks until the Hall of Fame game. I think it's the Bears. I forget who there is. The Bears, maybe Washington, like August 1st. So, it's not that far away. You get through these finals. You get like an NBA draft, some NBA free agency, a little baseball. You look up, and we're going to be having football on our TVs in not that long. So excited to talk about it. Oh, absolutely. And obviously, the HBO show uh, with the Bears on it, uh, again, is going to be coming up soon, too. The training camp show, it's called again, the um, uh, Hard Knocks. Hard Knocks, that's it. And it just escaped me. But yeah, that's, that's going to be coming soon. But you're right. I, I think if we're getting to the end here. We're in the finals for NHL. NBA championship and here we are it's like I think as soon as that ends people are like okay it's time it's time to start thinking about football maybe some of these odds change by then but it's cool that we're getting ahead of it a little bit early here but hey man uh before we talk about football uh NBA finals is, is this thing over between the Mavs and the Celtics I mean what a terrible performance by everybody except Luca these first two games what are your thoughts on that <laughs> I thought you were going to say what a terrible postseason it's been because you really it, it hasn't lived up to what we thought it would be. I thought it was really a balanced field, a balanced league with a lot of parity, and uh, you're going to get some great series. The injuries really hurt it. Some of it's just kind of randomness where uh, we we didn't get games. Sometimes the games were good, but the series were bad. Like Dallas and Minnesota, where all the games are competitive, but Dallas wins in five, and then Denver, Minnesota, the series overall is competitive, but all the games are you know 15, 20 point blowouts. So it's been a disappointing postseason. Uh, you asked if it's over. Probably. I mean, Dallas winning four out of five seems far-fetched. I think Porzingis possibly being out opens the door a little bit where, hey, you get one if you're Dallas, and then you're, you're at home with a chance to tie this thing up, and then who knows? But Boston just looks like the better team, the deeper team. If you're just picking sides playground style, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the first two for Boston and Dallas, uh, I would say cancel out, but that, Kyrie has not been good. And Tatum hasn't been good. It's, it's been a strange series. Uh, but after that, the next, like, three, four, five guys are all Celtics. I mean, you're talking about five of the seven best, six of the eight best players all on Boston with Holiday and White and uh, Porzingis, if he plays, when he plays Horford. It's just, it's not a great Dallas roster. You watch them play these first two games. They, how did this team make the finals? They just don't have a lot of shooting. They don't have a lot of, uh, you know, offense, especially if Kyrie's going to play like this. So uh, I, I was in between. Dallas, I think, needs both of them in Dallas to tie it up at 2-2 two -two to have any chance, then make it a best of three. I think if Boston gets even a split, it's 3-1, and then you got five at home, you got seven at home. Dallas probably yeah. not winning three in a row. I just don't think Dallas is getting a split. So I think Boston wins. I was I was unsure if Dallas would even get a home game with Porzingis. Like, I would say likely out. I, I think Dallas probably gets one here, and then Boston wins it in five. Is that one today? I see the odds are going up a little bit, minus three now on Dallas. I would think so. I never like to pick a team down 3-0, so if you're going to get one – I think for for the level of interest in the finals, I mean, if it's 3-0, everyone's just going to turn it off and stop paying attention to the game until, yeah. you know, unless Dallas came back and forced the game six or seven, that they everyone would assume it's over. So for the, the for you know, the benefit of interest, I would say I hope it's today just to get some juice <laughs> in the series. Uh, I'll, I don't know, though. I don't know. I, I'll pick them tonight. I, I'll say they win tonight. But Boston gets game four, and then Boston wins it in five. Okay. Yeah, and it's almost to the point where it's tough because I feel like if, and I kind of agree with you. If, if I bet Dallas tonight and I lose, I almost have to bet them again because are they really going to get four games swept? It's like it, it, that's the time where they should be playing out of their minds. But the thing about Kyrie Irving, man, it, this dude's got the worst and the best mental aspects, you know. And, and when I say the best, it was like the way he played against Minnesota, you know, it's like Kyrie comes back, Kyrie looks like one of the best players in the game. And then he goes to Boston where he is a, like afraid of the crowd. You know, I think mentally he just couldn't do anything. It's almost like uh, he was a massive liability. I think if Jason Kidd goes back in time, he doesn't start him. I don't know. It's just like I, I feel like he's hurting the team when he plays in Boston more. Is that fair? 
Well, I think Holiday is just a really bad matchup. Holiday has a size to really shut him down. He doesn't have any mm -hmm. space. He doesn't have a window to get his shot off. Everything is contested. He has very few clean looks. So uh, I just think this is a this is a tough match. So when Boston Celtic, when Boston has mm -hmm. Porzingis, they've got five guys on the court pretty much at all times that can shoot like forty percent from three and that defend and are long and defend the perimeter. And Lucas Hobble too, which. Look, he's fooled me a couple times where I think he's hurt, and I count Dallas out against OKC. He looked really hurt, and then he you know, came back, and they won that series in six games. But Luke is hobbling around here. They've gone at him defensively. Where That's the other thing, too. Dallas has played these teams where they can kind of hide some defenders here and there. You don't have to guard Gobert when a Minnesota right. out on the perimeter. You can maneuver around that. You didn't have to guard Josh Giddy. Boston, they've got guys you have to guard everywhere. You can't hide any of your bigs. You can't hide Luka. And Boston's just a team where you can't hide guys. And Dallas is a team that, that right. needs to hide Luka and hide some, hide some of their bigs on the perimeter. So this is just a bad matchup here for Dallas. That's a great point. And, you know, I'm looking at first quarter Dallas maybe. It's minus 130. You know, I, I look at the half and it's uh, minus 175. I'm like, oh, I, you know, I, I think I'd, I know obviously quarter first quarter much more variant. But uh, it's just like you guys, Dallas, you got to come out firing here. You know, you got to. And it just went down to 125. So there you go. Somebody's came in on Boston here uh, for the first quarter. I'm going to look at that, uh, possibly even put a small play for the for the total game. But, yeah, it's one of those. I think it's over. I think it's in five games. And I think you agree with that. And a gentleman sweep type situation. So uh, probably move on from that. Talk some NFL. Here we are, my man. We got the draft done. You know, it's great about the NFL at this time. A lot of the moves are done, Will. You know, we're kind of – we got these teams. We just got to kind of see what happens in OTAs, a little bit in training camp. Obviously, God forbid, we always get injuries in the preseason. The preseason is less and less games. But here we are, man. Uh, uh, the NFL's around the corner. Like you said, six weeks. The Hall of Fame game's coming up here. Um, I just want to kind of start general to you, and it, it's just fun kind of like just – early thoughts which teams are overhyped this year and and there's hype teams that i think deserve to be hyped but who's overhyped my radar is always up on these teams when everyone's kind of picking the same team and we're not there yet where you know the media comes out with the super bowl predictions but i can just sense with the way last season ended the young quarterbacks i think houston and green bay are going to be everybody's darling you're going to see plenty of houston to the super bowl you're going to see plenty of green bay to the super bowl and they should have beaten San Francisco and been in the title game. They got a young quarterback, young receivers. I'm always leery of the team that takes a giant leap. It's not always linear where you take one step forward one year, and then you take another step forward next year. A team like Houston that was uh, really bad, came out of nowhere, and now they're you know getting their flowers, so to speak, all offseason. Now, they added some players. They added Diggs. They added Hunter. I mean, it's hard not to like the roster. Stroud's obviously tremendous, and maybe he's so good where they defy this, but I just always have my – antenna up that these young teams when they take one step forward and everybody assumes they're going to take a second step forward i'm not so sure so i don't know that overhyped is the fair word they're, they're talented teams but those are teams where everyone assumes they're going to take a step forward and i'm not so sure going forward yeah when i say we're hyped it's always based upon their odds you know it's always based yeah. upon their number uh what we care about is sports betters 9.5 juice to the over minus 140 that's hefty i mean you got to think about what happened to teams that went had an easy schedule with a hard look what happened to jacksonville they had the first place schedule last year in their division and didn't quite finish quite as good then you have the eagles the eagles had one of the easiest schedules in the league in 2022 they went to the super bowl their schedule got harder especially the last seven six seven games and they got just they look terrible show of themselves they got injured uh the houston texans same situation one of the easier schedules in the league now going to at large games at dallas at large games at kansas city at large games versus baltimore so i agree with you 100 uh, houston was my number one and uh you also have remember the afc south plays the nfc north but there's four possibly challenging games there obviously detroit depends upon what you get from green bay and chicago maybe minnesota's a little better than you have the afc east where you have three top teams there in the jets the miami dolphins and buffalo so the patriots are, are like theoretically your only push over there so yeah I, i'm definitely lower on this team than the market now i didn't bet the 9.5 under I, i'm kind of waiting for a 10 here i think we get it i think uh the hype continues on this texans team and maybe we do get a 10 so uh 100 i think the texans were my number one 
probably overhyped team. And I do agree with you with Green Bay. I have to wonder a little bit more about Atlanta yet. I do like the Cousins move as long as he stays healthy. But I think they're getting a little uh, a lot of love like they did last year as well. What about underhyped? Is there any teams that can kind of just maybe be a little bit too ignored and their numbers might be just a tad bit too small, Will? Yeah, I don't know if underhyped is the right word because these are teams that are going to get a lot of attention. Again, we're still not in that cycle yet where people are predictions. So I don't know that um, this is that that hypes that underhypes the right word, but I'll, I'll say undervalued. undervalued. Let's, and, let's and change it. Still have some yeah. value. Undervalued. Since he at word. plus 170 or so to win the division, I think is a great bet. Everybody in the AFC has a brutal schedule just because there's so many good teams, there's so many good quarterbacks. Since he's actually one where you look at the schedule and you say, huh. It's not that bad where they play a last place schedule and their last place schedule. I mean, that is Titans, that is Panthers, and that is Patriots. They also have games against the Giants, the Commanders, and the Raiders. Now, look, we're sitting here on June 12th and trying to figure out who's good and bad. Hey, that's an easy game. That team stinks. Who knows? We we don't always know, but we can only go by what we think we know. And by what we think we know, that's six pretty doable games. Burrow, you figure, is back healthy. You figure the defense, which was bad last year with that good with, with the good defense coordinator, Anna Rumo, they'll, uh, they'll improve. I think plus 170 with that schedule. You figure Baltimore with the guys they lost in the offensive line, losing their defensive coordinator, who everyone seems to like. Uh, who knows if Lamar can stay healthy. Maybe Baltimore takes a step back. I think with that schedule, plus 170 is a great bet on Cincinnati to win the division. I'll also go with the Jets. Uh, that was one of my teams last year. I – I would say I got burned and I was wrong. And I guess I was because it didn't work. But I mean, Rodgers got hurt four plays in the season. So we didn't see it. And who knows? Maybe with that offensive line, Rodgers was probably going to get hurt at some point anyway. But they really, they sort of ate their vegetables. They just addressed their offensive line from every avenue, trade, draft, free agent. I mean, they addressed the the offensive line. And then they still added the offensive line for Shanu from Penn State with the 11th pick, 12th pick. So I think they're going to be able to block better. I think their schedule compared to the other teams in the AFC East. I, I went through it and I just did a quick exercise of opponents season projected wins. So uh, the bills, so, so you just add up everybody's opponent and how many wins they're, they're, they're lined at, at like, you know, we used one of the books, DraftKings. I think I used the bills have an opponent schedule where their opponents are expected to win 139 and a half games. The dolphins opponents are expected to win 143 and a half games. The Jets opponents only expected to win 120. They have a pretty soft schedule compared to some of these other teams. Plus, you look late in the year, some subtle advantages. They play the Rams, a warm weather team in New York, cold weather. They play the Dolphins, a soft warm weather team in New York. And then you look at the Bills. The Bills have a brutal schedule. The Bills play every team that was in the conference title game last year. Lions, 49ers, Chiefs. Ravens, they also play the Jets twice. They also play the Dolphins twice, and they play the Texans. That's mm -hmm. nine of the 17 games for <laughs> Buffalo. Look at Miami's schedule. Uh, they have to. They have the opposite of the Jets. Where this, Like I said, they're a, a soft, warm-weather team. They lost a lot in free agency. Hey, two was healthy last year, but that hasn't been the, the norm. Late in the season, they have to play in Lambeau in December. They have to play in Cleveland, and they have to play in New York. That's not a team that travels well. So... Uh, a warm weather team playing in the cold. I think the, the Bills have a brutal schedule. The Dolphins have a brutal schedule. The Jets is somewhat manageable. I like the offensive line improvement. And look, they everything went wrong last year. They got bottom, I don't know, one or two quarterback play in the entire league. And they still won seven games. So them winning mm -hmm. 10, 11, 12 games is not far-fetched to me. Getting almost two to one on them to win the division, I think, is a good bet. So Cincinnati and the Jets to win the division are, are, are my two uh, my two favorite ones in that category. All right. Well, Cincinnati, and, and you know, it goes through Joe Burrow here. Uh, they did lose their offensive coordinator, which I'm not sure is t uh, uh, that bad of a thing because I, I feel like they started this season uh, a little rough, even with Joe Burrow. They they, they kind of come in a little rough the last couple of years, and they just kind of have Joe kind of put the met pedal to the metal down the last uh, half of the season. Uh, obviously, he was injured the last half of the last one, but before when they made the Super Bowl run. So I agree with you there. You know, you know what's interesting? I look at Atlanta. Maybe they maybe they're the team to do it, but are the Saints a little bit undervalued? I don't know. They have a pretty easy schedule here. Uh, they lost some. They, they lost some guys, some older guys. Jameis Winston, obviously. Uh, uh, PJ Mustafer on the defensive tackle, which is 
somewhat big, but they also got uh, offense coordinator Clint Kubiak. So I want to see if he can get this offense running a little bit. Maybe Chase Young actually can uh, stop the run a little bit better this year. They signed Chase Young, pretty big uh, signing there. Uh, uh, Lucas Patrick at guard might help out that offensive line, but I kind of look at the schedule and I think, well, maybe seven and a half is a little bit too low, especially in one of the probably the weakest division in all of the NFL. Uh, it just depends upon what your real belief is on Tampa and the Falcons. And my other one is, I, I guess maybe maybe undervalued, a little bit more forgotten about is the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, I like that you know, one. Yeah, we have to remember Kyler Murray is an electric player. He can make plays, and they seem to start out the seasons pretty well. Now, they're going to have a tough first seven games, but maybe after that, they can kind of get it going. So it, the Cardinals is a team that I'm not going to bet their win total over until after game six, maybe. But uh, I'm going to look at them and think that they could be an ATS team you know, coming in. I really like the Marvin Harrison draft pick. I'm normally not high on wide receivers. But I think, uh, you know, he's the kind of guy that could take a team over the top. And we have to remember, this team did really well in the draft the last couple of years. They got some trenches, uh, definitely some offensive line help. Key additions were Justin Jones at defensive tackle, Sean Bunting at cornerback, Bilal Nichols at defensive end. Uh, you know, they have some good depth there. Uh, obviously, the draft was good. Darius Robinson, I thought, was kind of one of those 4-3 uh, sleeper edge guys that I really like here, one of a sizable edge guy that can get to the quarterback like a J.J. Watt size, you know. So I, I'm liking that. So I think that they could be somewhat sneaky. So I appreciate that, uh, that, that you're kind of with me on the Cardinals. Um, let's talk about some divisions. Uh, you know, starting with the NFC North, is there anything that you bet there or anything that pops? Minnesota at ten to one, just because that's a that's a lot of talent. It's a really good division. I like Chicago. I did bet Chicago over eight and a half wins. I laid a little more juice than it's out there now, and I think that's one. I don't know if it was you that I was texting about that with, but I just think you, if you can get ten to one on Minnesota, you just see it every year where somebody comes out of nowhere to win a division. Pretty much every year, you get like a, a real deep long shot. Last year was the Texans. I'm trying to think of who was here before, but it's pretty much a given that every year you get a long shot. So Minnesota with that roster, with Addison and Jefferson at receiver, Flores with that defense, they drafted Dallas Turner in the first round. They got a good home field. I don't love the McCarthy. I'm not a you know draft. I'm not a Darnold guy, so I don't love this pick, but I just think from a, a value standpoint, that roster – at 10 to one, I, I don't think that's a bad bet for the division, but nothing like that. I think you have to bet nothing. I'm, I'm going to pound the table for because I do think Detroit's really good. Green Bay obviously should have been in the NFC title game. And then uh, the bears are, are good. So they're rightfully the fourth place team. But if you're just looking for like, Hey, I have a free bet. I want to take a shot at something. Damn it. Like 10 to one at some books, I think is worth a shot. I mean, those are some long odds and the bears haven't proved themselves yet. You know, Caleb Williams, I'm, I, I had him as my number one quarterback coming out, a little bit of edge over Daniels. But the truth is, is that I, I go by system a lot more than just player. And so I'm a little bit nervous for the Bears. And I am a Bears fan, as you know. But I, I'm just not quite as hyped on them as someone else. But, yeah, I, I think the Vikings at 10-1 uh, to 1 right there, that, that that's wrong in my opinion. I think the Vikings might be a little bit too high right there. I would take them. I would take them before anybody here, uh, I think. You know, if you're if you're not high in the Lions, I mean, the Lions are plus one hundred and fifty. So I think that's mostly because of the Packers hype here at plus two hundred and ten. So I, 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 if it would be the Lions or the Vikings for me, you can literally make money off both if you do a little sprinkle on the Vikings. So completely agree there. What about the NFC South with the Falcons? There, are you believing in the hype with Kirk Cousins? No. Um, I mean, they they opened it ten and a half. I mean, when has Kirk Cousins ever won eleven games? That was when he's healthy and had. Yeah, really, really good teams with Minnesota. I just, I, I'm not a believer in Cousins coming off the uh, the Achilles, and they really, I don't want to say they wasted a pick, but they took a pick where if Cousins plays and plays well, like that's Penix is going to help them this year. That's a guy, a top ten pick. That's somebody that should be helping the team this year. That's not. I don't love Atlanta. I look to to you know fade Atlanta. I just, I don't know. I can't quite get there with the Panthers. You made some good points about the Saints. The Saints were a, a sharp mm -hmm. starring last year. Every year, the, yeah. every week, it seemed like the, the Saints took money last year. I don't love Carr. I don't love the coach. I, I, this division right now would be a pass for me. I guess Tampa. What's, what are we looking at, Tampa? I don't. I can see the numbers, but they're small. Tampa, plus, three ten, plus 310. That's so. not bad. If I had to bet one, I'd take Tampa plus 310, almost by default, though. 
Yeah, absolutely. I want to try to uh, make these numbers a little bit bigger as well for the screen here. But yeah, it, you know, I, I'm not taking the Falcons at minus 115. I like I do like the Saints over the win total at 7.5. But yeah, I agree with you. I would take Tampa for the division at plus 310. What have they done so wrong? And Todd Bowles has really surprised me. I was more down on him before, Will. I'm actually more higher on him now. So I was wrong about Todd Bowles. Uh, it, what about the NFC East? The Eagles at plus 115, Cowboys plus 130. Uh, then obviously plus 800 in the Commanders, plus 1,200 in the Giants. I'd flip-flop the Commanders and the Giants personally, but um, I, I mean, I, I think the Eagles do win it this year. I like their draft. I like what they did in the offseason, so not much for me on this one. What about you? Yep, I'm always looking at the long shots, and hey, is there something there? I think you can kind of throw out the Commanders and the Giants. I think it's a stretch to think either one could possibly win the division. So two-horse race, this, this division has a – habit a history of flip-flopping and nobody wins it two years in a row you're going to hear that about a thousand times before the season starts and there's a narrative that the eagles have passed the cowboys and i think that's a narrative i agree with with the draft with now look hurts i, I don't know what to make of hurts because i never thought he was going to be good coming in i you know watch him in college go, hey, he's just not good enough passer i admitted i was wrong he's a really good player then i watched him last year go maybe i wasn't so wrong so i've gone back and forth a few times <laughs> can he stay healthy is the tush push going to be as effective without kelsey I don't know, but that's a good roster. I like their draft. I don't love what Dallas did. Dallas, I don't know. You, you start to worry. I like the Zimmer addition. Zimmer's a good coach. I think he'll help the defense. You know, hard-nosed guy. They need a little toughness there. But I think the idea that Philly passed Dallas, I think, is correct. I think it'll be a close race, but uh, I'll go with Philly here. All right. Now, we both agree. Uh, NFC West, then. Niners, the obvious favorite. A massive favorite, minus 195. Then the Rams, plus 330. Seahawks, plus 700. Carlos plus 1300. What do you think about this division? All of the non niner teams are interesting. I just, I can't quite pull the trigger unless you're going to lose the quarterback for Purdy for a, you know, a decent stretch. They're solid enough to get to the 11, 12 or so wins. And I just don't know if these other teams have the upside. Like I, I kind of like Seattle as an over. I think they're seven and a half. I, I like them as an over the Rams. That's a solid team, but I just think that the 49ers have an upside and really have a, a floor, a basement that these other teams are going to have a hard time getting. I, 195, that's not sexy. It's not like, hey, you know, you're not going to, uh, you know, get, get a lot of attention for giving out a minus 195 winner. You're not going to get a lot of credit for that. But that's one of those ones, hey, you bet it minus 195. I wouldn't be shocked if you look week four, week five, it's minus 300. And week nine, it's minus 600. You say, hey, I wish I bet the minus 195. So if I had to bet it, I would, I would go chalkier. Okay. Well, hey, you know, I actually uh, like the Rams to finish to make the playoffs. And I took that at plus 100. Trust me, I I, I look at the 330, I'm like, mm, much better odds, you know, but nah, I just don't see them coming ahead of Kyle Shanahan this year, unless obviously injury. The frustrating thing with the Rams is I had that beautiful plus seven and a, that seven and a half under very early in the season. And then that, they blew that the doors yep. off of that one. <laughs> you know, but hey, you got an older struggle. quarterback who's always hurt. And last year he stayed healthy. So is he going to stay healthy again? I mean, what, what are the yeah. odds here of Stafford staying healthy for what? 34 games in a row now. I don't know. All right. All right. Yeah. I, I disagree with the Seahawks though. I actually took their Ooh. season win total under seven and a half. Hey, it's our first disagreement. You know, I, I just, with the new coach, the Pete Carroll firing, I'm not a big I, I'm not big on the new coach, and I just think that it could be a situation where now you see a different Geno Smith. Maybe without Pete Carroll in that system, there you see the Geno Smith we remember from the beginning of his career. You know, I do know that they have some talent, especially at wide receiver. But yes. I mean, I, they're going to lose one of their wide receivers. I'm sure Smith, the Jigma, and DK Metcalf are the ones that are staying. But man, that they demand the ball a lot. Uh, the Seahawks did lose some players, just like everybody. It's a tough division. If I like the Cardinals a little bit, then I probably have to be down on one team. So our only disagreement is on the Seahawks. What about the AFC North? Uh, Ravens plus 130, Bengals plus 145, Browns plus Ooh, 600. Probably. Maybe you yeah, There were some plus 170s for a long time out there. And again, shop around, you're going to find some disparity with these numbers. But uh, plus 145, I'd still go with Cincy just because I think they have a much easier schedule than the rest of these teams in the division. Okay. Pittsburgh, I, Pittsburgh's killed by their schedule. Pittsburgh's my favorite under maybe in the whole uh, 
you know, in, in the entire league, the entire market is Pittsburgh under. You just look at the last eight or nine games. I'm not the first or last person to think of this. You're going to hear that a lot, how tough the schedule is. It is. It's brutal. They play basically a Super Bowl contender every week from like week eight, week nine on. And you, you can tell me, hey, Tomlin always gets to over 500. He always does this. A lot of that is kind of smoke and mirrors. A lot of that is, hey, they're, I don't know, seven and seven and then they play a couple teams at the end of the year that are resting starters or a quarterback got hurt and they backdoor their way to nine and seven nine and eight and then they get absolutely trucked in the playoffs a lot of it's a little smoke and mirrors i think this is finally the year where that doesn't happen i don't love wilson i know you got two shots at it with fields and wilson but i don't love the quarterback it's a tough schedule i think i think pittsburgh's a really good under yeah i took that right away too it, it was one of those situations where i had the show and I talked about, man, Pittsburgh is looking suspect, but I didn't look deep enough in the schedule. Then I'm all of a sudden listening to VEASAN and you guys out there, all oh, the schedules. Bro. I'm like, oh my God, I got to get to this before it moves. So yeah. it moved on DraftKings. It moved on um, FanDuel, but, but it did not move on BetMGM. So I took it at plus 100, but now it's definitely juiced at minus 165, but I'd still take it at 165. Will, this is a brutal schedule. And uh, this Russell Wilson and, and Justin Fields thing is not going to work out well, in my opinion. And what's so funny about Mason Rudolph, and we'll talk a little bit about him later. I think he was really good this last year. I think he finished yeah, he was. strong for this team, and all of a sudden he's gone. So we have agreement in this division. Let's move on to the AFC South then. Texans plus 105, Jaguars plus 275, Colts plus 310, Titans plus 1,000. Not a Lawrence guy. I know I've been on this podcast before, and I it was – Early in, it was not the last year, but well, it was the year before. So I think it was Lawrence's second, maybe third year. I'm trying to think where I was. I think like I was one of the first ones to go, are we sure Lawrence is a star? I'm kind of questioning how good this guy is. So I'm not a Lawrence fan. I think he's bust might be strong, but he's never going to be this generational quarterback. He was built to be completely overrated. That being said, plus 275, that's decent value. Uh, I don't want to lay the basically even money with the Texans. They could come back down to earth. Colts is interesting. I like the coach. I just don't know. Can Richardson stay healthy? He's a man. Every play is a car crash with him. He's good, but he's so physical. It's almost like, mm -hmm. I don't know, Shaq in a, in a football uniform, just colliding with everybody on every play. He was impressive when he played. I just don't know. Can he stay healthy? Titans to me are a toss out. I think the value is there on Jacksonville plus 275. Still a talented team. Um, I wish I, I wish they had a little better of a home field advantage, which they don't have much of. But you know, decent quarterback, not a superstar like he was supposed to be, but he's a decent quarterback. Pretty good coach, some pieces on defense. I think you're getting almost three to one. I think that's the value play. Yeah, uh, the ja the Jaguars. Yeah, I was. Yes. I I just talked about them. They're the only one I would tip pick as well. But I also like them to make the playoffs at plus one thirty. It's a way to fade the Texans, kind of, but also be safe if they both make the playoffs, right. or if the Texans still win the division. So I'm, but I still might take the Jaguars at plus. 275 i do have that in my write-up uh the titans have an interesting situation and there might be a better way to bet them so i'll talk about that a little bit later afc east uh bills plus 170 jets plus 190 dolphins plus 200 patriots 25 to 1 with the worst odds in the, all the nfl to win their division what are your thoughts patriots still missing a zero there i will go with the jets i think at almost two to one for all the reasons we talked about earlier proved offensive line a big adv advantage in terms of the schedule when you line up the schedule side by side. Uh, I think the Jets is the play. I think the Jets are going to win the division. My first bet of the year was the Jets to win the division at wow. plus 240. It's plus 190, so not that much of a difference. I still like that value. And I like the fourth place schedule. You got to love that, Will, yep. right? That's going to certainly help. Uh, AFC west right is that where we're at the chiefs minus 225 the chargers plus 300 raiders plus 1200 broncos plus 1500 probably betting against the mahomes injury if you're bet if you're taking anybody else if you're just if you think the chargers can win uh, it could tell me hey you got harbaugh you got a really good coach who's just a complete psychopath and i mean that in a good way and you've got herbert <laughs> who i think is gonna blossom under harbaugh but they did lose a lot of their I will say weapons, but those guys didn't play a lot to begin with. You know, the Keenan Allens and the Ecklers, those guys were always hurt. Mike Williams, those guys were always hurt. So, yeah, you're missing them, but you were always missing them because they didn't play a lot of football. Chargers, it would be Chargers or anything, but I think the Chiefs win. I'm, I'm probably not going to play the Chargers. Uh, you could throw out the Raiders. You could throw out the Broncos. Uh, I think if you want to get at the Chargers, though, your idea with taking the Jags to make the playoffs to give yourself a little bit of an, uh, you know, a second avenue to get in. I would just take the Chargers to like make the playoffs. I don't actually think they're going to win the division. Chiefs have won this division, I think, since you were in junior high every single year. 
Uh, and I think that'll continue. I think the Chiefs win the division, barring a Mahomes injury. It's been a while, my friend. <laughs> I think that the only bet I would make is the Chargers if I had to, but I, I didn't. Agree. And I agree that the Chiefs are probably the, well, definitely the rightful favorite at minus 225. Not so sure. Here's another, a better way to bet these Chargers anyway. So let's quick go to the awards here. And why don't we start with Coach of the Year? Because it, I was just alluding to this. If I was going to bet the Chargers, I would probably take the coach of the year, you know, Harbaugh's coach of the year, because nine to one instead of three to one, if he wins that division, why would you, don't you think he'd be coach yes. of the year by going through the chiefs? And if you're scared, you can also do a Remaheem Morris at 13 to one too, because both of those are much better value than minus minus one fifteen for the uh, Falcons to win their division. I think these are the two coaches that makes the most sense from a voting standpoint. I, am I wrong here? Harbaugh nine to one is very intriguing. I'll throw in another one just because sometimes you win this award. Um, there's a few different things at play here. Like remember when the Sacramento Kings hadn't made the playoffs for forever and they finally made it, the coach got the credit. Uh, if Salah makes the playoffs with the Jets, I know they have a talented roster. They have Rogers. Maybe Rogers gets the credit, but it's in New York. That always helps with the market, with the, the voting. Remember Dable won it a couple years ago when a couple when some people didn't think he would. If Salo can win 11, 12 games, win the division, the, the, the narrative could be, hey, he held it together. Rodgers is a big ego. He uh, you know, he bounced back. The media likes Salah, too. Remember that. He's buddies with a lot of, you know, Peter Schrager and a lot of these guys. The media speaks very highly of Salah. Uh, if they can get off the drought, if they can get off the schneid, remember, it's been 14 years since they made the playoffs. That's the longest drought in all of sports. If he gets them in the playoffs, I think Salah at 11 to 1, not bad. I'd like a little more, but. That's at least the guy I think is live because of the narrative, even though we expect him to be pretty good, which is usually not the avenue to winning this award. That's a great call. And you, you know, you've always known that the media goes a certain way and you're great at reading the media. So that's a great call. That's true. You're right. He was going to get votes. And uh, that's a great point. So solid. I mean, but we're, we're look what we're looking at. We got nine to one, 11 to one and 13 to one with Raheem Morris. So, you know, you split your unit into thirds, you're going to still do fine. You know, it's not going to, be the big payout by betting one but i'd almost rather hedge by going all three in that he's situation. way down the board he's way down the board what's andy reed is that 50 to one i see oh jesus yeah 50 to one with reed and we just assume he's the best coach anyway right could he get a lifetime <laughs> achievement like hey 14 they go 14 and three they go 15 and two there's not a great other candidate and they say you know what he hasn't i don't think he's won it in a while i, I know he maybe won it early in his career i'd have to look that up but is there a path where he just wins with? Because there, there's another way to win this. I mentioned it's usually it's either an upstart team or like the Sacramento Kings. You haven't made the right. playoffs in a while, and you give you that credit. Sometimes you win it with dominance. Like when Belichick went 16 and 0, they they gave it to Belichick. When you, I think Harbaugh went 15 and 14 and two. A couple, oh, what was that? 2019, they went 14 and two. They gave it to Harbaugh just because he won so many games. If they ever had a home run year and they went, let's call it 15 and two, and just say, you know what, the guy went 15 and two. How could you not give him coach of the year? 50 to one. Eh, if you, again, if you have a pizza, a free bet, a pizza bet. Just yeah. in terms of the number, I mean, that's, I don't know. Possible. One of those free $15, $10 bets, whatever, yeah. that bet NGM keeps texting you every day. So, uh, you know, he's one I of mean, those. think about it this way. What's the adjusted win total on the Chiefs to go, like, over 14 to wins? 14 wins. It's not 50 to 1. And if he goes oh, over God. 14 wins, you know, 14, 14 to 3, 15 to 2, he's going to be on the short list of, like, at least the finalist where, hey, at least you have a guy at 50 to 1 that's a finalist. That's just, that's if the Chiefs, I mean, we know they're going to be good, so they're going to have to exceed expectations. But if they just have a dominant season, it's it's in play, I think. Anything for comeback player of the year? Obviously, Rodgers the favorite at plus 125, and you got Burrow at plus 210. And this is a tough one for me because I just don't understand the definition of it, and they keep changing it every year. I mean, the year that uh, 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 Gino won it, it, it's like he came back from what? Yeah. Not being good? <laughs> it's not like he was He's injured. Best. It's best story. I mean, that's what this is. This is best story. That's really right. what this is. The word right. comeback. I mean, it's not a literal definition. I think that's how the voters take it. What's Demar Hamlin? Demar Hamlin is. Oh my God, is he going to let him play all year? Um, he is one hundred. Oh no, it's Odell, Odell Beckham. I don't see him on here for some reason. He's not here. He's not on. The, he's not on the board for comeback player of the he year. He should this year. be. He, yeah, should he should be, be. because they, there could be a narrative, hey, he got screwed last year, and I had Flacco, I think, at 70 to 1 or something. So I was very happy with the voting. I think the v voters did a fantastic job voting for Well, you Flacco. hit Flacco. That's right. You yeah, I mean, I was that. late. Some other people had him 150, 200 to 1. I just thought 
hey, Flacco, uh, there was that – I forget what happened, but I just – I took a shot at a number and, and it got home. That was very nice. Maybe there's a little bit of, hey, Hamlin couldn't win it last year because he didn't actually play. Part of this award is not just the comeback part. It's the player part, and Hamlin didn't play enough, which I think there's actually some truth to. If he actually gets makes a team and has a regular role, you could say, all right, now he's a comeback player because now he has a regular role. So shop around and look for Hamlin. I think Hamlin could be one that's it's off the radar. And again, this last year proved where, look, this time last year, Flacco wasn't in the league. Flacco wasn't in the league until like Thanksgiving. So you can find some good numbers along the way. You don't have to rush to bet this, but I agree. The, uh, the, un- the, the lack of clarity in this market makes it, uh, makes it hard to really wrap your arms around this. But if you can find a, uh, a, a Hamlin, I think that might be a, a nice sleeper. Darnold Absolutely. too is interesting. If he gets a shot to start and he just keeps that job and leads the Vikings to the playoffs, Darnold could be in the mix. Rogers, the rightful favorite. They're telling you, don't bet Rogers at plus one twenty five. They just they don't want your Rogers money. They think that's way too short. <laughs> I, I don't know. That's I can't bet that guy at one plus one twenty five. That's just too short. What about like Justin Herbert at twenty five to one? Or you yeah. know, I, I mean, his story, he's coming, his story compelling enough though. Did he really? Well, he had he had kind of a down year. Then he got hurt. It's not like uh, you know, it's it's not exactly a hallmark tearjerker where he completely bottomed out. Like we all assume he's gonna bounce yeah. back. So I'm not sure. Again, though, it's back to your point, which is the best one where I mean you can ask 10 different people at a bar what's what's your version of this award? Who would you vote for? Right. Everyone's got a different interpretation. So you might think Herbert, hey, that's a good comeback story. Where and I might think well, yeah, it's not really a comeback. He's gonna be fine. He just had kind of a down year, he got hurt, bad coach. So there's different interpretations, which it makes it hard to bet, but it makes it fun to bet where you can get some some long numbers just because, hey, nobody's thinking about this guy, but voters might like it. So it's interesting. All right. No, I agree. Yeah, And then maybe the story on Justin Fields was like all of a sudden he passes the ball well this year to guys like George yeah. Pickens and, you know, some of those good receivers there. And all of a sudden, like, you realize it was the Bears coaching incompetence, which, you know, always is a possibility with the Bears. And then Justin Fields does something and – at 35 to 1, I find that as maybe a story too. I haven't bet anything yet, but great to talk about. Um, it, it's it's it, like I think pizza only just because of the way the voters are is probably the best in this situation. Um, I didn't do anything for offensive rookie of the year, defense of the rookie of the year. Uh, anything there for you? Not yet. I, I'm interested in the kid Pearsall, the receiver for the Niners. I've heard rave reviews about him in camp with uh, with Purdy, and he was kind of an underrated player in college. Has all the measurables. Just wasn't on a. It was on a weird team, a weird fit with with that quarterback. So Pearsall is an interesting one, but this is a quarterback award, and there's like five rookie quarterbacks that went in the first round. Yeah. So chances are it's going to be a quarterback. So you're probably talking about dead money if, if you're taking anyone other than a quarterback. Worthy is going to be a. Uh, yeah, Worthy's going to be a popular pick just because of the speed. You figure, hey, he's the next Tyree Kill. You've heard that a lot. But, again, it's probably just going to go to the quarterback who puts up the best stats of Daniels, Williams. Some One of those quarterbacks is going to play halfway decent, and that's probably who's going to win it. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and Darius Robinson at 30-1 to 1 for defensive rookie of the year is interesting just because he's going to be starting for the Cardinals, and there's going to be plenty of opportunities that they're going to try to get to the quarterbacks there. You know, Geno, obviously uh, – uh, Matt Stafford, who is getting older and is more like a statue back there at times. So uh, I'm looking at that a little bit too. I haven't bet it yet. Um, MVP. <laughs> I mean, you know, who I put, by the way, you know, I put a free bet on for offensive uh, offensive rookie of the year. This is absolutely not going to win and I probably shouldn't have bet it, but it was a free bet. And I just, I don't know. <laughs> Cody Schrader at 250 to one, the Missouri <laughs> running back who's on the 49ers. If okay. McCaffrey gets hurt and he's had a history of getting hurt, all of a sudden you got that player who I loved in college. I know there's some, you know, he's not the he's not a burner, but he's kind of a versatile back. He led the SEC in rushing. He put up some great stats in the SEC. You're gonna put him in Kyle Shanahan's system. Again, a lot of things have to happen, but if you got an injury where uh, where Corey Sh- Cody Schrader's the uh, the starting running back for the 49ers at 250 to one, it's at least interesting, but probably dead money, anything other than a quarterback. I'm looking for it on DK. I can't. So you must have got it somewhere else. That's really interesting. But it's a great call because what does the uh, this system do? You see it in Miami yes. with McDaniel. They just pound the running backs and they get injured. You get the guy that's going to going to be the Christian McCaffrey role. How is that not the offensive rookie of the year? You know, so that's very interesting. And offensive player of the year, I hit that with Christian McCaffrey last year. Tyree Kill is actually the favorite this year because I'm not sure if the voters would give it to the same guy twice. Maybe they would. But um, that's interesting. You got Jamar Chase there at 12 to 1, which is interesting too. So if you really believe in the Bengals, you know, you're looking at Jamar Chase. Uh, I think Justin Jefferson, I would not touch at 15 to 1 just because of the quarterback situation over there. But um, that's an interesting one as well. Um, 
What's and Mahomes, then, yeah. by the way? What's Mahomes for this market? For offensive player of the yeah, year. Yeah, because this is another weird one where <laughs> – Sometimes it's just the best non-quarterback. Sometimes the quarterback wins it too. Sometimes it's the second best quarterback. If you go back and look, sometimes this does go to a quarterback. Sometimes it goes to the MVP. Like this is a strange one where, hey, you won MVP. Why didn't you win Offensive Player of the Year? It's it's almost like a uh, a consolation prize because we know that the MVP goes to the quarterback. So this is a non-quarterback award, but sometimes you can give it to him. I don't know what's Mahomes for. 40, 40, 45, 45, 45 one. Oh, oh, Holmes no, has just a monster that. season, and you hey, you have to give him MVP and Offensive Player of the Year, or he's the second best quarterback, and you just give him that consolation again. It's Patrick Mahomes at forty-five to one or whatever. It's not horrible. It's not. It's definitely not. And it, I like the thought process here because this is what this is all about: is the thought process that goes into it. Um, Saquon Barkley could be a candidate if the Eagles yes. are back too. So, and he's sixteen to one. Really, not too bad odds, and obviously the Eagles. Uh, just crumbled last year. Barkley is a fantastic running back, and if he stays healthy, you know he's going to be in the mix. And maybe JT Jonathan Taylor could still be in the mix, uh, possibly as well. Uh, MVP is the last one. Will anything there? They've taken the fun away with this market. All these numbers have shrunk. I've talked about this before. In 2018, Mahomes won this award at like 80 to one. Then 2019, Lamar won at like 70 to one. And then 2020, Rogers was 30 to one, and they all won this award. So what the book says, you know what? We're not going to give out 30, 70, 80 to ones anymore. We know it's going to be quarterbacks. We're going to take all of these quarterbacks and we're going to shrink the numbers. So they're not giving you anything juicy. I mean, I remember last year, Sam Howell was like 45 to one. It's like, come on, this is Sam Howell. So they're not giving you any more like moonshots here. No. Um, I haven't bet anything. I think this is one where you could pick off numbers along the way. I, I just, and there's so many short numbers. And I, I think I'm a little sc scarred because I think I had, Purdy was at 22 to one, like three or four weeks into the season. And I was like minus whatever going into uh Christmas Eve, the Christmas or Christmas disaster uh, against the Ravens. But long story short, I haven't betted. I feel like a lot of these numbers are shrunk. I, I don't know if you have anything you'd pound the table for right now, but to me, all of these numbers are just too short. These numbers kind of feel like a ripoff, to be honest. It's a regular season reward, but it has to be a team making the playoffs. So you're right. I mean, look, sure. these numbers are terrible. You know, I mean, uh, Christian McCaffrey could be arguably the most valuable player at the position last year, but I'm glad that I took him for offense player of the year because of the way that went with uh, Lamar. I, I, you know, it's, it's a regular season award. You have to remember if they choke in the playoffs, it don't matter, but yet you got all your playoff guys. Let's just, let's just put the first uh, 14 uh, or so teams here. The best you're getting is two at 22 to one. If he makes the playoffs, maybe Trevor Lawrence sneaks in at 30 to one, but they're plus money to make the playoffs. You know, I mean, you're right. They did take the fun out of this. I'm not touching it. Um, if I had to do it, it'd be probably Trevor Lawrence or Anthony Richardson at 30 to one, but I agree with you. Uh, this is that's, a tough, that's a hell of a leap for those guys to win the award. I mean, I know you're yeah. getting pretty good numbers, but man, yeah. I don't know. like Richardson, yeah. what's he played four games in the NFL and gotten hurt? Like, I, I, I get the upsides there. What's Herbert 18 to one. He's the yeah, one I'm, I'm, he was the other one I mentioned. Uh, or I, was horrible. Mentioned. I would just, I feel like this way with a lot of guys where I look at it, I could see a path where he wins and it's enough of a sleeper where, you know, it's interesting, but I feel like I need double on all these guys. Like if you give me <laughs> Herbert at 36 to one, all right, I think that's I think that's more fair, honestly, because he's still in a division with Mahomes. He's probably not going to win the division. Like it, it's hard to win the MVP. There's a lot. There's eight, 10, 12 really good quarterbacks. It's hard to crack that list. You're, I mean, think about this. If you're gonna, if you're Lawrence, you gotta have a better season than Mahomes, Burrow, Lamar, Allen. I mean, you gotta beat out some major, major players. Mm -hmm. And at like eighteen to one for Herbert, uh, I don't know. Uh, don't disagree with here. You're the best, Will. Where could our listeners and viewers get your great information and media? Goldboys.com. I'm on VEASAN a few times a week. Should have bet more podcast, Fox the Bear Bets podcast. So appreciate you having me on. Usually when you have me on, that means you're getting a text pretty soon. Hey, you're going to come on mine. So usually we do these home and home. So I'm going to have to have yep. you on soon. But appreciate you having me on. This was fun. Fun My thought man. exercise too. Good to get the, uh, the wheels yeah. turning too. Absolutely. Nice and early before maybe some of these uh, move and maybe some of these jumped out to our listeners. So that would be wonderful, Will. Thanks a lot again, and we'll be texting this week. Sounds good.